Hi, um, let's, let's find out how to put a address measure feet accurately. So Charles Brainerd is the inventor of uh, uh, the Brainerd device, the device that is found in multiple shoe stores and also at podiatry clinic. Um, this device is a standard form of measuring feet, arch length, and the width. Okay. <clears throat> the first step is to prepare the brain of foot measuring device. The width bar should be set to its widest position and the arch length indicator should be slid back, right? As you can see right here. So the foot can be positioned easily on the device. Some devices have dual calibration. They may have dual calibration for the heel to the toe arch and width measurements. Um, just make sure you read the colored area. Sometimes this device is in metal. Sometimes the device is made of plastic. So to accurately use a brain of device for foot measurement, uh, one has to ensure the heel is placed firmly against the heel cup. Uh, the toes are flattened against the base and the arch length slider is positioned correctly. Then the width slider can be adjusted to, the me to measure the foot's width. It's crucial to measure both feet as they may vary in size. Right? The larger foot's measurement should be used as a guide for the best overall fit. All right, the sizing system, the modern Brainic device takes three measurements of each feet, each foot. Um, the length from heel to the tip of the longest toe increments of barley corns. Now, barley corns is an English uh, unit of measurement, right? It's an old school unit of measurement. <coughs> U.S. has a completely different uh, measuring system, so Brainic device can also be available in American unit system. Arshin, the length from the heel to the inside of the ball of the foot, right? Heel to the ball of the foot or the metatarsophalangeal joint. This is the metatarsophalangeal joint. The width of the foot perpendicular to the length. So width is actually perpendicular to the length, right? The metatarsophalangeal joints, MTP joints are the joints between the metatarsal bones of the foot and the proximal bones, the proximal phalanges of the toes, right? All right, so how do you position the foot, all right? So podiatrists, um, <clears throat> usually ask the patient to remove their footwear and stand placing their right heel into the right cup right so sometimes this brainic device can be reversed so this can be right and this can be the left heel okay placement but let's say if you're measuring the right foot then you can actually ask the patient help the patient assist them you know by pressing down on the ankle and simultaneously uh, pushing the brainic device towards the ankle as well to make sure there's no gap in the middle the patient should stand with equal weight on both the foot uh, to ensure the foot being measured has elongated and spread to its maximum size. At times, you may have to assist the patients, you know, to make sure their uh, feet are well spread, okay? Uh, if they're curving, if they're not spreading, if they have structural deformities that may cause issues, again, in measurement, which means that you may not be able to help them with the right uh, shoe size. So you have to be sure that the heel is properly located against the back of the heel cup by grasping the patient's ankle and device together as illustrated in the uh, photo, right? So you have to grasp both of them together to make sure there are no gaps. <coughs> now, the heel to the toe length. How do you measure heel to the toe length? Press the toes uh, flat against the base of the device and look straight down over the longest toe, not necessarily the first toe, to read the toe length. Make sure the customer's socks are snug against. If you have a patient that wears socks, right? Which a lot of many people do, especially in winters, against the toes without drawing the toes back. All right. So just do not uh, uh, make uh, just make sure that the toes are not snug back. Just make sure the socks are snug back. All right. To yield an accurate measurement. Arch length, heel to the bone. Okay, place your now. This is very important because at times we'll see patients that may have structural deformities. Yeah, I job shadowed uh, a podiatrist, uh, and um, we had a lot of patients with a lot of uh, structural deformities of the arches. Right, place your thumb on the ball joint of the foot, slide the pointer uh, forward so the inside curve of the pointer fits the ball joint of the foot, and the two high ribs come in contact with the thumb. When the pointer is properly located, lower the middle rib uh, will be against the ball joint on the side of the foot. This yields the arch measurement. The arch length represented in the diagram says eight and a half. All right, so it's somewhere right here. This is seven, eight and a half right here. So that's the arch measurement. Yeah? <clears throat>
All right, find the correct shoe size. All right, so compare the arch length, the heel to the toe length. Um, use the larger of the two measurements as the correct shoe size. If the arch length and the heel to the toe length are the same, this will be the shoe size. If the heel to the toe length is larger than the arch length, then fit the heel to the toe size. If arch length is larger than the heel to the toe, then fit to the arch length. Okay, so uh, moral of the story is whichever the uh, length is larger, fit it accordingly, right? Because we are trying to get the shoe size with the maximum feet spread out. Okay, measure the width. Um, slide the width bar firmly to the edge of the foot. Locate the shoe size, right? So here, slide the bar to the foot firmly for a thin foot, lightly for the wide foot, okay? Because uh, chances are you'll be dealing with a lot of diabetes shoe wear right so you have to make sure you slide lightly for the white foot okay because at times you may also have swollen feet you know that's why the timing of the foot measurement should be such where you have a swollen feet so you know what's the maximum size of the foot basically if the shoe size falls between the widths choose a wider width for a thick foot uh, and a narrower width for a, a thin foot measure the other foot okay at times you'll see uh, due to structural deformities, right can be different from the left, okay? Or left can be different from the right, vice versa. Reverse the device end for an end. So this is left, this is right. Uh, measure the other foot following the steps described above. Uh, measure, uh, be sure to measure both feet, then fit the larger foot. It is common to have different foot sizes. Now, junior kids may have different uh, model. Yes, branding device available for adults and for kids. Uh, children's feet are constantly growing, right? The junior model device ensures the shoe will fit while allowing approximately one size for growth. All right, so if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share uh, this particular video. Um, you can also comment and tell me how, you know, you like this channel and this video. Okay, bye.